What's up, y'all? It's Rom Lorel, and I'm back with another exciting episode of Rom's World. And today, I got the legendary songwriter Points gracing the couch today. He's written songs for the Isley Brothers, Jamie Foxx, Mary J. Blige. Keep it locked in. You don't want to miss this episode. Let's go. What's up, y'all? I'm Rom, and I'm back with the interviewing portion of our show. And I told y'all I had a really special surprise for y'all. You know, it's the music section, so I brought in my boy, Points. Welcome to the couch. Yo, how you feeling today? Man, I'm good. How about yourself? Thank you for coming in. I feel Man, really good. I here. feel blessed. Me too. So me too. we about to jump in, right? Let's do it. So you're from Jersey. I am. How has I know a lot of people from Jersey? Like people think I'm from Jersey, but I'm actually not. Um, from, ha- I'm from Chicago. Okay, yeah, yeah, I think I did. So that. like, I just appreciate Jersey and like Baltimore because I used to dance like back in the day. Just always used to dance to like Jersey club music. And I, so, I, I was gonna say that it's actually a, a big connection between Chicago and Jersey and baltimore when it comes to house, house music. Yeah. yeah house music started in chicago a lot of people think it started in jersey yeah but it became really big in jersey yeah um i grew up on that like my moms and family and everybody you know was club heads and being out at the club you know listening to house music i was just telling somebody yesterday like riding in the car for like three hours with my cousin and we ain't heard one word yeah it's just, it just music <laughs> yeah so, my stepdad used to come home like every day from work and he is just like blast house music every night, yeah. like. So yeah, yeah, yeah. So we definitely have that connection to to Chicago. So. Yeah. So growing up in Jersey, how did that shape the way you create? Yeah. Um, well, I'm from Newark, New Jersey. Okay. So you know, it's an interesting place to say. The yeah, least. it's like the south side of Chicago. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's it's kind of rough, but you know, it's heavy, heavy in the in the church world as well. Um, like most hoods in America, you know what I'm saying? Like you're going to find a couple of things in the hood, right? You're going to find fast food, you're going to find a church, and you're going to find a liquor store. True. Um, and you're going to find drugs. So that's what was in North, in violence. Violence, drugs, church, um, and, 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 and people getting lit. So Facts. that's how I came up. That's really how I came up. Um, family was heavy in the church. My grandmother's a pastor. So um, that's that's where a lot of the musical background was like home. You know what I'm saying? It was in church, everybody playing instruments, singing and things of that nature. And then being in the hood, hip hop music obviously was a heavy influence for us. Um, and, and then my father and mom being, you know, from the 60s and things of that nature, they was heavy on the soul. Music, yeah. The, the old school R&B. So that's really the, the makeup of uh who I am as a, as a person. Um, the only other thing that I would say added to me was MTV. True. Really like being yeah. into watching like Road Rules and, and Real World. And you know, I still watch that. Like I still watch <laughs> yeah. the challenge. Yeah. Yeah, I- yeah, yeah. Um, and what that did was really give me an introduction to pop music, True. rock music and things of that nature, right? So I was soaking all of that in, which now kind of made me a person who, you know, I've had placements in, in pretty much every genre of, of popular music there is. Pop, hip hop, R and B, right, you know what I'm gospel. So that's what's up. That's interesting because I talk to like, you know, my friend Sincere, like that's yeah. my brother. Yeah. Um, we always talk about like how we have similar backgrounds because we're from Chicago, mm-hmm. but he grew up in the church and I sort of didn't because my parents are like younger. Yeah. So like my mom, she's just about to turn fifty. Okay. So like my introduction to music was like 80s 90s um and then it was like you know my grandma she struggled with drugs so i didn't spend a lot of time like in church you know grandmas make you go to church um so it's just like you can you can really tell the people who grew up in church Uh like musically and how they create from the runs so it's like very interesting to see like the parallel differences yeah um but even like my dad like when i grew up when he saw that I could sing, he wanted to be an artist. Uh, so he was just like, oh, you can sing. We about to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, like, yeah, yeah. So he He's taught me like it. everything. So I feel like, do you think like growing up in church, 
like really was that pivotal moment when you was just like i want to really do music um well music was like breathing right true it was like i didn't never wake up and was like i want to breathe today (laughs) all right it was just around Mm-hmm. And everybody did it so that's just what it was it was like you know what I'm saying my little brother taught himself how to play the piano by the time he was eight years old just from ear yeah. but also because he sat at the piano while my aunt played piano in church right while my uncle played piano like my mom sang my mom and my aunties grew up with whitney houston everybody sang in the yeah. whole neighborhood and my family was known as that family like the lambert family everybody sang it. <laughs> it was six kids my aunties and uncles my mom and them six kids so it was like my father came from a big family and then they all was in the church and his brother was a famous musician in the town and you know what I'm saying so all of my uncles um and my mother's friends and father's friends was all musicians yeah. all singers so that's just what we did we yeah. sing we go to my house on either side on a holiday there's some singing going on. right <laughs> somebody on a piano like my grandmother my father's mom had a piano in her house my mother's mom had a piano in her house right like so that's just what it was yeah that's lit that's fire (laughs) so like what made you like move to la and just make that change like that pivotal moment to say like you know what i'm really gonna take this serious i'm moving to la and i don't care what it takes yeah i'm i'm going after it so so to backtrack a little bit i i wasn't gonna be in the music industry okay so i grew up singing you know started like being a church musician at like 10 11 years old started directing choirs young and really i never had a real job when i was a kid like all my other friends was out like probably went to go work at a sneaker store or Mm -hmm. did something like that to make a little bread on the side me and my brother was musicians so we would go church to church sunday mornings collecting bread you know what i'm saying go direct somebody to choir over here come over here and do praise and worships over here go back to the home church and make money over here so about 14 years old i'm making money on sunday like you know two three hundred dollars a sunday that's pretty good fast forward i go to college music is not a thing i do it on a side (laughs) like i wrote songs me and my brother we had a gospel group you know what i'm saying so and that started young. I started we was 10 years old. I started mm-hmm. writing songs for our group and stuff like that. I went to college, become a teacher. Got my degree. Started working at the college as an admissions counselor. Again, was not trying to do music. I made a mixtape 2007. And um, shout out Natalie Prosper. Me and Nat went shout to college. Shout out to Nat. We I love Nat. Went to college Nat. together. And, you know, played it for Nat. And she was like, this is dope. Um... Uh, but I don't know if it was her or one of our other friends was like, well, you know, because you want to be an artist a little bit, um, Neo was a songwriter. Okay. Right? So my artist dreams got got killed when I was like 16. <laughs> I, re- I remember, um, to, to make a long story short, somebody from Def Jam through my cousins found me and listened to like a demo I had and I had produced it, wrote everything and recorded myself and i was 16 this is all yeah. done fruity loops to make the beats Cute and then recorded loops. myself using my brother's voice memo on a <laughs> compact computer with the uh internet microphone right right so i did all of that he was like yo who produced this me you produced this who like, who's what? singing me you singing who who wrote it me you wrote it <laughs> Who recorded you, me? He was like, hi, damn. Right. He was like, yo, I want to go get some headshots for you. And crazy enough, RIP, because he just passed away. His name is BK. He just passed away a couple of weeks ago. He was like, I want to take you get headshots and um, take you to Def Jam, where he was A&R and that, and try to get you a deal. I was like, crazy. We went to go talk to my grandmoms, because that's who I stayed at at the time. And um, she was like, no. <laughs> if he ain't singing gospel, he ain't singing I ain't nothing. Waiting. <laughs> so that was that. I was like, damn. So I never wanted to be an artist after that. Um, fast forward 2007, I find out that you can make money as a songwriter. Okay. So I'm like, damn, I'm about to graduate college. It's the move. I've been writing songs since I was like four. Mm-hmm. I remember like changing the words to commercials on TV and like singing my own words. <laughs> same, I remember same. sitting at a comp- uh, at my grandma's piano at six years old and writing my own original first song. Yeah. So I'm like, I could write. That's I I do that all the time. That's yeah. easy. Like, <laughs> So I was like, cool, I'm going to start writing songs. Um, I do that for three years. 
started working with this producer named Eric Hudson, produced Flashing Lights for Kanye and Can We Chill for Neo. That's uh, major. And just other people. Yeah. Um, Entourage for Marion. He's from Jersey as well. So I started working with him through uh, one of my cousins and um, going around the country with him for a while. And finally, um, everything happened at the same time. I kind of feel like God pushed me. When you don't know the answer, mm. how do you keep pushing on? Because <sighs> um, <when you laughs> I think I changed a minute ago how I view life, really. Like, and um, pain, yeah, right? And uh, loss and adversity, it can do one or two things to you, right? It can make or sour or have the wrong outlook at life or it can shape a better um, outlook at life and make you more of a giving person, uh, more empathetic and um, more... Uh, I would say hopeful about things, mm -hmm. but also what it did for me and, and I've been dealing with that my whole life. Like yeah. I grew up, um, with, you know, parents who had substance abuse problems. Um, so, you know, growing up with a lot of feeling, a lot of rejection, mm -hmm. um, due to that and, and just, you know, growing up poor, bro, growing up, like not having food, being on welfare my whole life. Right. Like not, not, always having the best clothes and yeah. you know what I'm saying and just dealing with you know the 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 life of kids who grow up in the hood right um <laughs> it really made me like like a more empathetic person I think um but what it also has done as I've gotten older in life was stop looking at life as a bunch of destinations okay that's a that's a gem right stop looking at life as this goal and that goal and this goal and that goal and looking at life as the journey. All right. So you've worked with a lot of amazing, crazy yeah, for real. people in the industry. Mm -hmm. People like Coco Jones. For sure. Super Jenny talented. Jackson. Yes, legend. Fantasia. Goat. Like, yeah. The list will continue to go on and on. And there's still so many people I did not name. That particular moment when you got the call or mm -hmm. you was in the studio and they were like, we working with Janet. Yes. What went through your mind and how did that play even happen? Yeah. So shout out Harmony Samuels. Shout out uh, to Harmony. Super producer. Uh, big, big, big uh, part of my career and a uh, frequent collaborator. Um Harmony's African, you know, Nigerian. Okay. He's yeah. from London, and I believe one of the people in Janet's camp at the time, maybe her manager at the time, I believe, um, was from London, you know, and he had a connection with Harmony, and I believe that's how that situation got yeah. brought to, to Harmony, and then, you know, he turned to his hitters. And I was like, yo, you they, told me, they told me that Janet working on a project. She need, she need records. Mm -hmm. um, Randy, <laughs> Randy Jackson coming over. He gonna tell me what they really looking for, and you know what I'm saying. We gonna right. We gonna get in the studio and, and cook up. So I'm like, dope, like cool. So we got there. Me, Varen, um, Tommy Parker was involved with that. Uh, I think there was the three of us. Oh, and Sean, Sean. I can't think of Sean last name, but Sean is from Philly. Super dope writer. Um, we we got into to the studio. Um, had like a camp for a week. Yeah. And was like, yo, Janet want these type of songs, and she, they want to talk about this, and they want to talk about that. So me, Sean, and Varen, we get in the room, and made for now comes. That's where we come because that was like something she wanted to talk about, like this that the idea of bringing the world together. Yeah, and, you know, and we needed it at that time. Yeah, too. yeah, like and rising to the occasion. Yeah, and and. and Taking season the moment, right? Right. So if y'all don't know what song we talking about, we talking about May for now. Yeah. It's like it came out like what two years ago? Two, uh it's been a minute. Two, I three think years ago. Two thousand nineteen. Like, yeah, before COVID yeah. or like around yeah, that time. Definitely before. Yeah. So it was a time when we really, really needed like unity in the world. We for still sure. do. We like we Trump was it. president. Right. So we needed a lot more unity. Yeah. Yeah. And there was a lot there's a lot of unity even in that song because it also had another legend from the reggaeton world, Daddy Yankee was yes. on the song with her. So Shout out to Daddy Yankee. Super shout out. Um 
So yeah, we 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 you know we got in that room that day and they had the beat, and we like you know we just started with the words and it really flowed. We Varen and Sean was just spitting the words. If you're living for the moment, don't stop. You got to celebrate the feeling. Go up, like, right? You know what I'm saying? Like, and we just. We just was having a good time and having fun. You know, they sent it to Janet. We did like four songs that week. I think she cut three of them. Mm -hmm. uh, Made for now. That's is major. The, yeah, Made for now is the only one that came out though, um, so far. And um, yeah, man. And about, about maybe like a month later, Harmony called me to the studio and was like, "Yo, I want to play you some." He played me Janet Jackson's vocals on a song I wrote, and I'm like, "This is crazy." Yeah, and like you said, I grew up. Listening to Janet Jackson, right? <laughs> you know what I'm saying. My family, my aunts, my mom, everybody else. They, you know what I'm saying. Grew up on Michael Jackson and them. Right. So Janet, you know that was that that was that that girl. Like, yeah. you feel me? <laughs> and you know, just growing up. Well, Whitney it was Janet. Like, yeah, watching Janet videos and and dances and right. like Janet. You know, she was she was kind of. Give it to Michael on that screen video. So, <laughs> she, like, just she watching, did eat Michael up a few yeah, times. Just watching no Janet, just watching Janet as the mega legend that she is. A legend. And then hearing her singing words that you wrote in a song that you're a part of, it was, it was surreal. It was definitely a couple of moments in my career where I was like, "Oh, that's crazy." Yeah, that's that's crazy. That, Let's get into one of them other legendary moments: the Isley Brothers. Let's do that. Yeah. How does that even happen? <laughs> like <laughs> that's a full circle moment in so many ways because I, like I told you, I came into this industry with the producer Eric Hudson. Mm -hmm. Being young, things happen, disagreements happen, we go our separate ways. Right. You know, I work a lot with uh producers, Harmony being one of the main ones. Ten years later, me and Eric reconnect. Mm -hmm. One of the first things he tells me, uh, calls me in on is, yo, I'm going in with the Isley Brothers next That's week. Crazy. You don't got to say nothing else. You had me at Isley. Right. You don't even have to say brothers. I don't care which Isley right. it was. It could have been I Alex Isley, and I would have been there right. working <laughs> with Alex Isley because she's a fucking Amazing. beast. Yeah. So, yeah, he's like, I'm going with the Isley Brothers. What day, when, and where, and what time what I need to bring. Exactly. <laughs> what you I get a call. What, what I what I need to do. So You need me like, to bring coffees? Like what the fuck? Like but he's like this though, but here's the here's the the cool thing about it too. Before we even went in, he like, yo, I got a track that I think would be dope for them. You should pin something to it. Okay. He was like, um, my pops, who Eric's pops is a legend, Curtis Hudson. Curtis Hudson produced, and Eric Hudson's mom uh, wrote Holiday for Madonna. Okay. So you could just, and the, the yeah. record music Legendary. makes me use control is yeah. Eric's pops. So, like, That's he's fire. like, my pops had this idea that he was like doing over this track that, that I made, and he was like, I think it got potential, uh -huh. like, but if you like can rework it and blah blah blah, it could be something. I was like, all right, cool. So he played it for me, um, which was just like on a cell phone, I think, of his pops, yeah, like, recording this, this melody idea, and then I went and switched it around and and made it into this song called "The Great Escape." Okay, um, I sent it, and the whole point of "The Great Escape," which is why I talk about studying and just knowing, but also it's second nature to me because my father was such a huge Isley Brothers fan, right that I grew up listening to them, you know what I'm saying? So Voyage to Atlantis yeah. is one of my favorite songs of all time. And that's what I was like, if I'm going to do something for the Isley Brothers, I want to like make Voyage to Atlantis. Right. Yeah, like I want to write that type of song. Yeah. So I'm like, damn, what can I say? And at the time, we had just got out of the pandemic. World was crazy. Mm -hmm. And I was like, we need to escape this world. And I was like, damn, if you could have somebody that you can escape the world with, right. that's a great thing to tell somebody yeah. that you that you love and that you into. Like, girl, let's let's make a great escape. Let's right. get the hell up out of here. Fuck like, out of here. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I wrote know. this record and um 
another full circle thing. Like in high school, I was known for singing. Yeah. But I also was known for like doing singing impressions. Okay. And my Ron Isley impression <laughs> is oh my Ron Isley impression is better than <laughs> how bro be doing Denzel on Instagram. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Big bro that be doing Denzel yeah. with the dreads and shit. I can sound like Ron Isley. Like nobody's like Ron Isley. <laughs> right. To the point where I got so I used to walk around the, the the high school and what the hell is going on? Oh, yeah. Right, seeing contagious, <laughs> contagious in high school. Right, so and that was just, just a joke. Everybody like yeah. laugh and I do that. I sing this song in the voice of Ryan Isley. Mm-hmm. So crazy, when they give it to Ryan Isley, he tells me when he sent it to Ernie Isley, who wrote Voyage to Atlantis and wrote let me know and wrote mm-hmm. make classic. me say it again yeah. girl and, you know what i'm saying the classics ernie who played guitar wrote all those songs ernie asked him ron ronnie when did you cut this right i ain't even cut it that ain't ron me i said i know ernie <laughs> that boy whoever they got thinking that boy sounds just like me he was That's- like Fire. That's how, when you know when when the person who you try to sound like say like you them, sound like them sound like me. That's something. So yeah. Ron did that, and crazy. I've never even said this in an interview before, but the other surreal moment of working with the IZ brothers was when I I I feel crazy even like saying it because it's so unbelievable though. It's like Ron Ron IZ said when he heard the Great Escape. He played it over and over and over, mm-hmm. like all all night, and he cried. I was about to say that. Did that make you cry? Because that no, made but me cry. Right now, <laughs> thinking about it is yeah. making me. He was like, he got emotional. Yeah, about the song, mm-hmm. and I'm like, damn, Ron, I can move. Isley Ron, that's a gift. Said. Like a song, you gotta understand. Ron Isley been making songs for like seventy years. Seventy years, for years, because I know that my grandma, my grandpa, like all the old school people in in everybody's family. You know, it's like he been singing songs for that long, mm-hmm. and I could write something in twenty twenty one, twenty twenty two that moved him emotionally. Yeah. That's that's some 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 deep shit. Yeah, that's it is. That's a gift because I realize that it's really about a feeling. Yeah, like it's not about you; it's about the impact you can make on somebody else. Yeah. So to have that impact on a legend who has impacted people for who impacted me, who impacted you, who impacted your father, <laughs> your grandparents, like it's crazy. That's amazing. Yeah. So I want to give you your flowers and your things because you. the music that you are a part of and the music that you make, it makes the world feel something. Was there anybody that you or any pivotal moment that happened in your life or that you worked on that you was just like, damn, I'm here? Yeah. Yeah. Which one was that? Um, I would say it was it was definitely – uh what happened when the way came out okay ariana yeah. grande yeah when uh ariana grande <laughs> yeah. when we did uh the way um which i wrote with seven streeter mm-hmm. and uh my sister jordan sparks um harmony produced it uh the label didn't take it for for jordan at the time yeah so it was sitting and finally um wendy goldstein at republic sent over ariana grande who was at the time just, just acting starting out. on Sam and Cat. Right. And uh had been on Victoria and um you know, she was an actress. Right. That's what she hadn't had any she music. She wasn't the Ariana that Grande was, she is now. That was popular at the time. True. Right. So she sent her to us and Ariana ended up hearing that song the way uh she was like, This is my song. Mm-hmm. This is my single. Like this is my single right, right here. She shot the music video. She got Mac Miller on it. She did all of that, made it happen. Uh, the label put it out, and it took off immediately. Yeah. Within the first week, it debuted 
top ten on the Billboard Hot 100. It was everywhere. Like I remember the time and place I was in a car on the expressway in Chicago when I heard that song. Wow. Um, cause I like that that first album. I like was playing that shit like yeah. a lot. So I got y'all them streams. Like, <laughs> <Good> um, <laughs> but no, like I remember where I was when I heard that song, and it felt like summer. Yeah, it felt very fun. Yeah, but at the same time, I felt like I wanted to be in love too. Yeah, how was it sharing that special moment with everybody involved, like Harmony, Jordan, Seven? <sighs> Man, it just happened so quick. Yeah, <clears throat> literally, it happened within a week and i remember i'm sitting in the barber shop getting my hair cut it's crazy i have the same barber now shout out smoke i've been getting my hair cut since before 2013 (laughs) but i'm in the barber shop getting a haircut and i'm on twitter i guess at the time and it says that it's going to it's, it was number nine on the Billboard Hot 100. Okay. So as a songwriter, before I even got into the industry, I was studying the Hot 100. Yeah. And I knew top 10 hits mm-hmm. on the Billboard is a big deal. Right. Like, you don't get into the top 10 on the Billboard. Like, even just, now like, today, it's very, still hard very to few get people there. ever see the top 10 on the Billboard right. charts. So I'm like, what? I called Nat. Nat managed me at the time. Shout out to Nat yeah, though. Like I yeah, feel like I met yeah. you at Nat house. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, like we used to Nat, live across the hall from each other. Yeah. I actually said this on a, a post on this blog on Instagram. You got soul. Okay. And it, they shouted out Eric Bellinger, and I was like, "Yo, yeah." When I moved to L.A., Eric let me sleep on his couch for like six months. Right. I feel like when he moved out, we had moved in. Nat, no, no, I moved out. Okay. And even after me, a couple people was there between y'all because. Apartment four on Friar Street. Not gonna get an address because people live there. Right. <laughs> I came there. Natalie shared that apartment. First of all, okay. So here is the thing. Yeah. Before Nat moved in, Compton, the tattoo artist. Okay. Compton lived the, there. Okay. Right. So Compton lived there, and then there's this the guy named Chris who was Harmony's business partner at the time. And and so Chris and Natalie moved in together because they okay. lived they lived over there at those apartments <laughs> in North Hollywood where or Studio City I should say everybody be living <laughs> there freaking uh, the Avalon type yeah of joint. Everybody they lived there and there. then they moved out of there and moved to to Friar Street okay right when they moved to Friar Street it was Nat Chris Eric I came there they couch was broke. <laughs> literally they had a party or something somebody broke the couch so i'm sleeping on the couch with my feet up like this but i'm just happy to have to stay because i ain't had a way to stay after me and eric Hudson fell out i had to right. go figure that shit out so i'm over there like i said six months just working going yeah. to harmonies every day going to other sessions working with eric bellinger we writing songs together in the crib he had his his bedroom and when he moved Cause I think he had got like a couple of cool placements, like Chris Brown, and mm-hmm. cause when I came here, nobody had placements. Right. <laughs> nobody had real placements at the time. We all was just trying to figure it out. You know what I'm saying? Niggas going to McDonald's and, yeah. and trying to split a Happy Meal. <laughs> so he moved cause he got bread first. <laughs> he got up out of there, and I moved into his room. Okay. I got a room. Ain't had no bed. <laughs> okay. I was sleeping on the floor, but I had a bedroom. Right. Then I got. An air mattress. Yeah. Right? And it's crazy that I met my wife now, then. And the okay. first time she came to chill with me, I had an air mattress. Okay. And that's how you knew, like, we rocked I had together. a bed frame. I couldn't air afford mattress. a mattress. <laughs> Somebody gave me the bed frame. So I'm putting this room together by piece by yeah. piece. I got a free bed frame from somebody. People don't understand, like, in L.A., the rent. Listen, and then you trying to make it. And then I it's just like ain't you had no bread. Room. By that time, my unemployment had ran out. Yeah. Church was like, mm, you know, we going to give you this bread. But that's how I got food for the month. And, yeah. You know what I'm saying? So like that. But um, I'm putting this little bedroom together. There's no TV in there, nothing. It's just a bed frame. On the side, it's an air mattress. Mm-hmm. I ain't going to lie. 
I told her a lie. I said my bed was coming. <laughs> but it was coming. It I just was? hadn't ordered it yet because yeah. I ain't had the money. She ain't right. even know that part. I just said the bed was coming. Right now we on this air mattress, girl. Yeah. Come on and lay over here. That's how so I she, <laughs> So, you know what I'm saying? We was, we was on this air mattress when she came to visit because she was from out of town. And um, shortly after that, I did Think Like a Man okay. with Neo and, and uh, Jennifer, Jennifer Hudson. Hudson and Rick Ross. Wait, <laughs> that's funny because I literally be singing that song. Yeah. Like the yodeling part. Yeah. Like, Ayuaka, Shout out Courtney Harrell. Ayuaka, Ayuaka, all over the house. And yeah. he'd be like, why the fuck are you singing yeah, that yeah, shit? Yeah. And I just be like, I just see it on TikTok, it go viral, and then it be in my head. Do it like, go viral? Yeah, that it be going viral on TikTok. Send it to me. I've never yeah. seen that. It just be people be like doing crazy ass shit. Like and then it play just that went sound? viral for um um, Cause you know Halle's, um, Halle Bailey, her baby is named Halo, and yeah. you know the yodeling it, it kind of like sound Halo? like Halo. Chill. So, so I they know that. Please like, send that to me. Yeah, I'm gonna send it to you. That's funny. So send like, that to yeah, me. it it goes viral on TikTok. <laughs> I gotta send it to so, Courtney. I wonder if she knows. Where my phone at? I'm about to send it to you right now. Yeah, that's. Crazy. I just posted it the other day too. Yeah, I didn't see that. So we do that song. That's my first check. Like, after being in the industry from 2007, I got my first check. Okay. Like real money. Which was only ten thousand dollars in two thousand and like twelve from that movie. Um, I got a bed. <laughs> so, the bed. The bed was painted in your yeah, account. Yeah, yeah. I get a bed. The next year, I make my 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 wife now my girlfriend. So yeah. right. So now she's my girlfriend. Two thousand thirteen. So the way comes out goes absolutely nuts. Right. Two weeks before the way came out, I did my first deal though. Because I had eight songs coming on Fantasia's album that okay. year. So they signed me to a Wait, publisher deal. I had eight songs coming on Fantasia, so they signed me to a deal. Eight songs on yeah. Fantasia. Mm -hmm. Without Me. Yeah. That's one of my favorite songs on that album. Yeah. Um, It was nominated for a Grammy, too. Nominated for a Grammy. Yeah. R&B Song of the Year. Crazy thing. That was a freestyle. That was a freestyle, people. Yeah. Me Did y'all hear that? Me and Kyle Stewart, rest in peace, K2. Um, Yeah, we just went in the booth and... and Cause Fantasia had a little disagreement with somebody she was talking to at the time. Okay. And we had did another song, which is actually my favorite. If you got that album, I think my favorite song on the album might be called "Change Your Mind." Okay. Because it reminded me of Whitney Houston. I did it um, kind of in honor of my mom's, cause my mom's was like, you know, friends with Whitney Houston. It was, you know, my whole family was big Whitney Houston fans. So when I did "Change Your Mind," which is also a freestyle song, I just sung like what i grew up with you right know what i'm saying um so that song was done and harmony hit me harmony came in the room he was like yo k2 just hit me um he asked can he pull up which was i respect harmony because you know as a songwriter he wanted to make sure i was okay with another songwriter coming in like right. i'm already doing the lion share of this writing but me and k2 went to college together too shout out bloomfield college in new jersey uh edgar etienne jv went there Okay, shout out to JV. Carlos I haven't King, talked to who who is a uh, really dope um, engineer. Who went, went to there. Bloomfield that you know? Because we always Natalie hear Prosper. Yeah, went there. Um, K two went there. Um, uh, Young Jers. It's a, so okay. a whole bunch of industry people who got placements and right. doing things in the industry went to this college, which was not a music college. It was just a college, a small liberal arts private college in New Jersey. Okay. Probably like twenty three hundred students in the whole college. So anyway, so that goes into perfect timing too, because like all of y'all was at the perfect yeah, place. Yeah, because right I wouldn't time. have worked with Harmony had I met had I not met Natalie. Right. Natalie was managing the studio at Harmony's, and when me and Eric stopped working together, literally like the next week, Natalie was like, "Yo, we over here working on something," and they kind of stuck. Like, you want to come over here and try to see if you can help. Yeah, and I was like, yeah. And after I came there that day, Harmony saw you know what I what I could do as a writer. He told me to keep coming back. Okay, and literally that's how me and him started working together. So when I got an opportunity, like things are working for me at Harmony, I'm catching little placements, little things happening. Right. What I'm gonna do? I turn to my friend. I'm like, Nat, this opportunity came through you. You want to manage me? Right. And that's how she started managing me. So um, we're over there. Which is a which is listen. I'm gonna take a, a stop right there. Reward the people who help you. Yeah. <laughs> I could have easily been like, I'm gonna go get me a, a a big name manager. Right. Like nobody knew Natalie at the time as a manager. She wasn't really managing anyone else. Um, that was like popping or anything. She right. was just you know young and we grew up together. She was trying to make it and she had made a connection for me with Harmony. So you you 
you managing? Do you want to manage me? Like, you know what I'm saying? We might, we might have to bring that on the show because she, oh, she probably ain't no got Mike. some great stories. Ain't no Mike. You got to. So we do, we do the record um, the way. I think that's how we were okay. talking about. Yeah. Um, it comes out, goes crazy. I call Nat. I'm like, Nat, they said it's top 10 billboards. She's like, what? I'm like, this is top 10 billboard, Nat. She's like, let me make a call. <laughs> she hit it back. Like, it is. Next week, it's going to debut top 10 billboard. Everything changed. Yeah. Now, before that, though, I did start hearing, like, because cause, um, Think Like a Man was out uh-huh. for a year before so i heard that on the radio uh funk master flex dropped like mad bombs and if you're from new york jersey like me like yeah. hearing funk master flex drop a bomb on your shit <laughs> oh, it's crazy new york like <laughs> hearing him do that type of shit and bring the song back many times huh rick ross on them right movie. boom i remember being in the um <laughs> yeah i always tell a story i was in the i was in the mall beverly center not giving a damn who sees me so no <laughs> i was uh in the beverly center and i went and made my first I would say uh broke rich nigga uh purchase, right? Okay. <laughs> so, I'm gonna tell you. What right was now, that purchase? The way you can spot a nigga who got some money, whether and it ain't, it ain't gotta be big. It could be just his uh un- his 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 tax return check. <laughs> oh, he gonna go buy a Gucci belt. So let me That's tell true. you, right? So That's bad. Uh, uh, flip flops from Gucci. Right. Or Gucci flip flops. Let me tell a you. Wallet. So I went and got me a little Gucci belt, right? <laughs> I dropped like five hundred on the belt. I ain't never paid five hundred for nothing. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, no, no. I never, never five hundred. Like the most I had paid on something. I, uh, in high school, college, I used to take my little money and go get me like the Prada World Cup. True, but that was like four hundred twenty dollars or three hundred twenty dollars. Yeah. I never had paid five, five fifty, six hundred so, wait, out the door. You talking about the Pradas, like the old school Pradas? Yeah, the Prada World Cup. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like yeah. Lil Wayne used to. Okay, win. yeah. So, I remember everybody had them. Yeah, yeah. I used to go 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 spend three hundred twenty dollars right. on, on the Prada World Cups, but. I um spent like you know six hundred and I'm like damn like you ain't really got money you just got your check yeah. you ain't got no real money like that I remember like a week after that I went back and bought some sneakers like <laughs> fourteen hundred dollars sneakers get some sneakers to Listen, match the belt. yeah got a got a <laughs> got a coordinate right. it got a coordinate so I um uh, I go out the joint and this is <laughs> <laughs> I'm laughing because this is the funny shit about what I did. I went to Gucci, got a Gucci belt. Okay, got the Gucci belt. And walked immediately to H&M to get jeans. <laughs> <laughs> but get it's the like Gucci putting, jeans, though. Listen, it's like, putting, it's like putting truffle mushrooms, you get what I'm saying, on yeah. McDonald's fries, nigga. I went and got but a that, Gucci belt. That, that might, might be, be good, a vibe, right? Though. <laughs> like, somebody tell me how that go. Yeah. So I went and got a Gucci belt, went to H&M. When I left out of Gucci, I was feeling like, yo, you probably shouldn't have spent six hundred dollars on this belt. Yeah, I walked into H and M, and think like a man is playing. Okay, how did you feel during that I moment? I said, I spent six hundred dollars this goddamn belt. <laughs> Facts. What the fuck are you talking about, nigga? For they sure. They play my song at H yeah. and M. That's what I'm thinking. If you have any advice for somebody coming up, trying to follow in your footsteps, or they look at you and say like, "That's who I want to be like," what advice would you give them? First, be like yourself. Facts. Second. Believe in yourself, because mm-hmm. if you want to be like me, I'm striving to have, and at times I have had, an unshakable belief in myself. Mm-hmm. That's it. I've had. You have to have a borderline crazy belief delusion in yourself. Mm-hmm in your abilities and what God is able to do with your abilities. I I've come to this realization that life is a canvas pretty much and any picture can be painted on this canvas at any right. time. Right? Any picture, the worst thing could happen to me mm-hmm. or the most amazing thing can happen to me. Facts. So if I can believe that there is a chance that I can walk outside and get hit by a bus right now or that an airplane could crash through this motherfucking window and kill everybody in here. I got to believe there's a chance I could be a billionaire. Yeah. I got to believe that. I got to believe there's a chance that I can make it. I can do the things that I want to do with my life. I can right. do better. I can change my family's life for the better. I can get songs on the radio. I, I got to believe that, right? 
So it's like you got to have an unshakable belief in yourself and you got to learn everything you can learn about the thing you want to do. Yeah. You have to become that thing. I studied the Hot 100, yep. not just the top 10, 20, 40, 70, 80. I want to know what's coming 100. down. What is the labels putting money into that's starting at number 80 that's going to rise up? I want yep. to watch these things go so I can see what the trend that's coming in the next couple of months. Because yep. by the time that song that's 80 get to 50, 20, everybody going to want that song because right. that shit shot up. So I'm listening for what is the ones that's maybe sticking, right? When I'm going to the club as a songwriter or producer or as an artist, I'm not just going to the club to turn up. I'm watching how the music affects the people. Exactly. What are they gravitating to? What old school song is still hitting no matter what? Right. When you out at the party and they got to play this song, right? For instance, it's like there was a part, that, there's a part of every party I used to go to that was an old school part. Yeah. And they play This Is How We Do It. They play Poison. They play. We talk. So what about these songs is still going 20 years later in the club with niggas like, oh, shit. And they, they start right. going to, <laughs> doing an old school dance. Like, like what is the, <laughs> what's catchy about these things? And I realized that it's the hook. Yeah. Okay, I need to make sure these hooks is fucking fire. Right. It's the melodies. Melody is king. You can say anything. I started realizing the moment I heard, like, heard I remembered how popular it was for R. Kelly to go booty. Right. Booga, 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 boo. <laughs> He's saying the most dumb <laughs> shit ever. But it's the melody. Songs. It's the melody right. that he's using. So I'm like, okay, melodies is king. Why is melody king? Here go, here go a real jewel I'm going to drop to y'all. It's really simple. He dropping a jewel, so listen, pay attention. The first thing you've ever heard was melody. Before you knew English, you knew melody. Yep. You, as a kid, you learned A, B, C, D, E, F, G, which is mm -hmm. twinkle, twinkle, little star. Yep. H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, how I wonder what you are. And it's simplistic melody. Yep. I don't got to do a bunch of runs. I ain't got to be singing like I'm goddamn <laughs> Ariana Grande right. or Mariah Carey or Whitney Houston or nobody. Because it's about the melody and the simple ones rule the, the world. When the night has come and the land is dark. In the moon, yeah. yeah, simple, and that's something that I had to learn too. Because, like, you know, you taught to well, I was taught, I should just say, me, like, I was taught that you know, you got to sing with feeling, but like, when you're trying to make like a certain song, you got to hit those like beats too, like, the, while you're singing, so you got to pull back and not the, sing the so trick, much. The trick to being great and amazing mm -hmm. at music is doing the hard things easy, yeah. Right, it's taking the easy melodies and then delivering them with the, the passion or the feeling that needs to be delivered on that record. Yeah. Beyonce is not delivering cater to you or tonight I want to dance for you the same way she's delivering love on top. Right, or you can't break my soul. Yeah, she's giving you what needs to be done on that record yes that is how you win is figuring out how do i give michael jackson ain't giving you thriller on uh human nature exactly our lady in my life and he's I giving you the performance that needs to be done for that song but at the end of the day it's all the things that all of those songs we just named have in common is strong melodies mixed with great lyric and then great performance yep. of the, the melody and lyric right and that's what makes you know what I'm saying give you a great chance of having a hit record yeah so y'all hear that that was a gem so make sure we gonna do a little zoom so that y'all pay attention <laughs> <laughs> you worked with the legendary mary j blige yes yeah how tell us about that and like what what went on like give us as much as you can give us because okay. that's crazy yeah man so that was so long ago that's like phew. Again, I hadn't had any placements. Um, I had the Jamie Foxx stuff, but it hadn't come out yet. Yeah. So Eric's going there with Mary, and he's like, yo, you know what I'm saying? We're going there with Mary, bro. We just did the Jamie Foxx shit. Come do the trap to do the Mary. Right. So me and Sam Hook, we did a day with Mary. The next day, I go back with Eric, and Mary's back in there working again. This time, she's working with a writer named Chris Stahl. They write a song. At the end of the song, they need a bridge part. Okay. Um, And that's where I come in. Again, it's one of those moments. I'm in the back of the room. And you writing a bridge, too. And they like, 
they like, yo, we're trying to get this little part at the end of the song right. And it wasn't like coming in. Mary's in the booth. Um, her, her ex-husband at the time, Kendall's out in the control room with Eric. Eric's like, bro, you got something? I'm like, yeah, yeah, nigga, you know how it's going. <laughs> so he like, yo, Kendall, A-Rod got some. And mm-hmm. I'm like, um, I tell him, you know, blah, 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 blah. He tells Mary, boom, rest is history. Makes it onto the song. Song comes out. It's a single on Hot 97 once again. This is before uh, Think Like a Man one. So this is the first time I hear Funk. Right. Like, like, <laughs> and then my second session in L.A. happened at Marvin. Okay. At the Marvin Gaye's studio. Yeah. Yeah. So it was Marvin Gaye's studio, and the person who had used it right before us was Michael Jackson. Okay. That's the only people who had used the studio in the last like eight years before Mary because you had to be invited to come use yeah. the studio by the studio owners like you couldn't book it okay you know so boom that comes out so then the next single I have on the radio is Stand Like a Man but this is the first one I wrote like the whole song me and yeah. Courtney wrote the whole song together Um, Eric came in Eric Belger came in and did the bridge but me and Courtney had wrote the song together. So this is like my first time like, oh shit you know family everybody like yo I heard the song on the radio da, yeah da, da, da. boom not no big money though. The way is different. Yeah. The way is on everybody's radio. Right. Not just like urban radio. The way is on pop radio, rhythm pop, radio. Rhythm. I remember going to San Diego to like the county fair, play the song, and I'm just watch, walking around watching people who don't look like me. And they're loving the song. Loving the song. Sing it was the everywhere. Like they out there like eating their cotton right. candy, like making these like core memories for right. them. You know what I'm saying? In their head of being at the fair, Memorial Day weekend, mm-hmm. the song dropped in like March or April, so now everybody, and you know, that song, I love it, coming out, I know that that's people's like right. childhood right there. So, yeah, it's a huge hit, and that's when the real money started coming Yeah, in. That's when the real money started coming in. Like, that changed everything, and yeah, and the phone calls came, and it's different now, and everybody want to talk to you trying to figure out who you are and right. like what's going on like so yeah that was the first time i was like oh okay this is different i'm here and i'm a black man um in this space because pop music it's not something we do a lot right especially produce or write yeah so as a, a writer you know you just like you're in different conversations you're meeting with the different people at bmi mm-hmm. you know what i'm saying you you meet with the I, I got a pop bmi award like you know when when choosing to work with certain people how do you have discernment for who you want to work with because when we work in certain situations we want the energy to be yeah. the right energy in which we could create well having a hit is a double-edged sword mm-hmm. and i say that because you could burn out yeah because what happened was because i did the way they wanted me to do the way all day yeah every day over and over but not just the way in melody or lyric give our sauce to other pop white acts yeah that was what the phone call was. Right. Every time. It was, we got Lil Billy over here, and he's the next Chris Brown. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like, how that's going to happen? Yeah, because Chris Brown is Chris he Brown. He could be the next Bieber. That makes sense. But the next Chris Brown? Yeah. We got this girl over here, and she's the next, you he know, like, yeah, <laughs> she's the next, like, Ariana, who, like, you know, they were trying to say was the next Mariah. And right. It was like, and it was just so, it was like, yo, how many song, R&B songs can I write for pop artists exactly. was what the conversations were. And that, that kind of burnt me out. Yeah. And turned me off. Really, like, that really, like, irked me. I literally stopped writing mm-hmm. and made a whole clothing line. <laughs> like, <laughs> that's what I spent my money on. Like my first big checks was starting this clothing line and like started designing clothes and okay and shit like that and crazy like if you look at my my um discography you'll be able to tell because every I just realized this this year I've had a placement every year that's since amazing. 2010 wow every year since 2010 13 years straight I've had a song come out even in years, years that straight. I didn't work because like like I said 2015. I didn't do too many damn sessions, yeah. but I had did so much work. Like we did the whole Michelle Williams album, so I had like say yes with Michelle and Beyonce. Say yes with 
Kelly and Beyonce, Michelle Williams. Yeah. He wrote that. My mom's parents moved from Rockford to New Jersey. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So Michelle Williams went to the prom with my cousin. Mm-hmm. Like, so she from Rockford. So she so from right outside. Felt like like what R. Kelly said, right outside Chicago. <laughs> like that. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, that was that was another surreal moment. Right. I feel like that's okay, it's so let's get to that. Moment. So yeah. with so many surreal moments, how do you like, do you place them in your heart a certain way? Like, does every pivotal moment have a certain specific feeling in your heart or, like, a moment in time? I remember where... it did. Yeah. It's easy to, not necessarily jaded, but things become so regular. Too. Yeah. That's the other thing about being successful, right? Mm-hmm. It's like you have to fight to keep it, to, to remain as happy as you were Yeah. the first time. Like, we saying... My first time working with an artist or having a placement or a song come out is with Jamie Foxx in 2010. We're in 2024. It's 14 years ago. Right. And I've consistently had songs come out on big artists every year since then. Mm-hmm. So it becomes like, oh, this is a regular yeah, day. It's I like, do this shit. It's like, like <laughs> yeah. It's like, okay, here goes another one. <laughs> so it's hard to like stay like, oh my God. You yeah. Know? Um, well, not so much as like, oh my God, but just like, damn, like, this moment to is, really stop yeah. stop and think about it and like let it sink in yeah like, it's not a job my nigga. you're not like fixing toilets like, right you're working with some of the most influential people who's ever lived and that makes you influential you know so it's like you got to take a step back sometimes and be like damn like i'm always thankful to god yeah but i'm not i don't ever really sit back and be like wow like i did that yeah or that like Beyonce, you know what I'm saying? Beyonce was saying words about Jesus. Yeah. The person you. <laughs> that people try to crucify about not believing in God or right. believing in Jesus, saying your words from her heart, something she also believes in mm-hmm. with her sister, right. Michelle, and her other sister, Kelly. And I remember, because we wrote that song, not with the mind that they were going to be on that song. Yeah. We just wrote Say Yes. And that was her, her song. And I know people are going to be tired of me saying this. That was also a freestyle song. <laughs> but again, it's because I'm just saying what I know. Right. Everything I say, I believed. I feel that. Like, and church folks might crucify me, but I went outside, I smoked some weed, because <laughs> I do that. And I came in the booth, I'm like, I right, loaded up. <laughs> Literally, right before the Jesus song. Listen, <laughs> I got higher to God, closer to the Father. So, um, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, all right, load it up. They load it up, and I I say what I believe. You know what I'm saying? The hook is from an African song from, like, how Harmony grew up with that. Yeah. When Jesus said yes, nobody can say no. That's, like a, you know, like, in black churches, we see, like, in the name of Jesus, we got a victory. They got that song. When yeah. Jesus said yes, nobody can say no. But the verses was literally me going in the booth and saying, I'm not worried about a thing. Yeah. Because I know you Jesus are guiding me. Where you lead me, I will go. Mm-hmm. I have no fear because I know who's in control. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> You're all powerful. You're almighty and all powerful. And it all belongs to you. Mm-hmm. And it all you know belongs what I'm saying? to you. That was just what I believe. Right. There's no limit to what you can do because it all belongs to you. Yes. When Jesus said yes, nobody can say, say no. no. So it's a freestyle. And that was right. it. Michelle cuts the record, does an amazing job singing it. She p- just playing her album for the for her sisters, and they tell her this is the song we want to be on. Yes, we jumping on it. This the one. That's crazy. And um, because I wrote another song with intention like for them to be on, it. on this. It's on Michelle's album. It's called Free. So if you ever listen to it, it's called Free. And I just had it in my mind. Okay, Michelle gonna sing this part, like. The song Free is talking about there's three different stories in the Bible of three different women, and this is how they all come together when they meet Jesus. Okay. And who the son, and she. I got to listen to that. I never listened to it. It says, she who the son sets free is free indeed. Okay. Right? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? The Bible says, he who the son sets free is free indeed, which is supposed to be a man or a woman, but I just made it about a woman. Yeah. And that was the, the, the one I thought. I'm like, yo, this is, could be for them. Yeah. 
Um, but this is the one they ended up getting on. I remember going to Harmony Studio and him pressing play. He didn't even tell me he was about to play. He just played it. Bop, bop, <laughs> bop, bop, bop. And I heard the same verse. I always hear Michelle singing, hooks in. And that second verse came in. And that voice, that voice. <laughs> you lost it. That voice said. <laughs> I'm not worried about yeah. a thing. And it's Beyonce voice. I'm like, I literally said to myself, bro, that's Beyonce singing words. That's Beyonce. Yeah, Beyonce. Singing your words. I had to take a step back. Like, <laughs> that's there. Yeah, that was like a, yeah. That's so probably you say more. That was the most pivotal moment or? That and the Janet one. Okay. That and the Janet one, and then the Ron Izzy one recently, for sure, were like, dang, that's Beyonce singing your words yeah. about Jesus. <laughs> your grandmother was a pastor. You came out to L.A. against a lot of people in the churches. Didn't want me out here. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You brought it to the industry that they and wasn't sure about. Here is the biggest singer yeah. in the world. <laughs> Now singing about Jesus, right? And you. you wrote it. <laughs> Call my grandmother immediately, like, grandma. I'm like sure. Nana. I just wrote a song about Jesus. I got to be honest. They say, "The girl, That's come on now." Come on now. I felt like I felt like uh, I always use that joke, like with Kanye. When Kanye was like, "I made Jesus walk." Never going to hell. Yeah, I say I may say yes. I never going to hell. I got G- yeah, Beyonce sing about Jesus. God got to give me some some slack for that one. So, right, uh, but <laughs> no matter what I do, listen, God, God got me because of that one. I'm gonna get to the pearly gates. He gonna be like, <laughs> you can't get in here because of which I don't think that's gonna happen. Yeah. But I'll be, I'm like, but say yes. Yes, say yes. Beyonce, she had on the white with the side braids. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I got one more question for you, right? So all the artists that you've worked with, all the accomplishments that you have, is there anybody that you haven't worked with that you really want to work with? Yeah. I'll manifest that on this show. Yeah. Stevie Wonder. Stevie Wonder. That's a good one. I got to get a song with Stevie Wonder. At this point, it's I'm gonna have to talk to Ron Isley or somebody like Ron. Yeah, I feel like it's in you. Your gotta reach. tell Steve Stevie Wonder <laughs> that he needs to be working with me. I'm actually gonna do that because I had a, there was a chance on this last album where Ron and Stevie was gonna do something together, uh, but they just never got around to it. And they did. I was like one of the people Ron had asked about possibly writing the song. Okay. So yeah, I'm gonna talk to Mr. Isley. I should say. So Stevie, Ron, but Mr. You, Isley, if Stevie, you're hearing please. this show. Please, Stevie. I'm manifesting that Stevie watching this show. This is the camera? Yes, this is the camera right here. Oh. This your camera too though. Okay. I don't think you don't Oh. But I'm gonna look in the, <laughs> I'm gonna look in the camera anyway. You right. Mr. Somebody could tell him he's looking in the camera, yeah, Stevie. So he means this. I'm manifesting Stevie <laughs> is listening to the show. Stevie not gonna worry me now because I did that. <laughs> Somebody gonna have to tell him like Stevie, he looking in the camera, so I think he really sincere. Stevie, Mr. Wonder. I would love to work with you. It'll be the honor of my life. Um, Stevie Wonder. You know what's crazy? Because I would think it's somebody I would have already worked with at some point, but it's not. I I would I would love to write a song for Chris. Okay. I love to write a song for Chris Brown. I love to write a song for Rihanna. Um, so outside yeah. of that, there ain't too many other people I ain't already worked with. Right, that's yeah, what I'm saying. So all these people, with. you got but, Fantasia, Coco Jones, Isley Brothers, like Beyonce, Michelle, Kelly. Oh, you know what it'd be dope too? Okay, so there's a couple people. There's a couple people. Okay. Ed Sheeran. Ed Sheeran. Adele. Well, that'd be fire. Adele. Fire. Like, just because I believe, that, like, it's like, geez, like, they, they, there's their songs. Oh, and I'm a, a Bruno Mars. Bruno Mars. Okay. What? I'm I'm a Bruno Mars fan. I yeah. have to admit it. I'm like, yo, my daughter would play 24 Carry Magic the other day, and I was like, yeah, he's fire, a fire pop I'm artist. I'm a Bruno Mars fan. <laughs> I like Bruno fucking Mars. I've been liking Bruno Mars music since at least 2011. Yeah, so I guess that would make me a Bruno Mars fan. I had to come to that same conclusion with Doja Cat too, y'all. I was like, Damn, I love Doja. I'm a Doja Cat fan. I feel like out of all the. Um, yeah, I feel like out of I'm all like, the like 
creative Doja artist. Like she get it. Okay, most. so Doja too. Yeah, Doja. Doja okay. and SZA. I would like to go in with SZA. both of those. It's like it's not like I feel bucket. Like SZA makes it's not like, like bucket crazy. list crazy. You know who who is though too? Because I feel like my R, the what I think I know of her music yeah. is something I feel like I would really gel well with Missy. Okay. Like Missy is like my Missy. Um, like she, biggest like she give me that soulful church. She be giving yeah. us that for forever. Like, you know, all the songs that she done is like that. My favorite music is the R and B groups okay. of the seventies and eighties. So stylistics, okay, Delphonics, Isley's, like you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like those people, those type of groups with those harmonies and that mm-hmm. like that's like my go to music. So I feel like Missy gives us that a yeah. lot. Lauren Hill gave us that a lot. Like, you know what I'm saying? Those influences are those type of song groups and stuff. So, um, yeah, th- those those people right there that I that I could write off the top of the head that I can name. Yeah, 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 for sure. I would like that. Yeah, I got I got something coming with Cher, which is such a crazy thing. Cher? Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. Congrats on that. Thank you. So yeah, like I'm just like collecting like bucket list uh, legendary Correct artists like them. Infinity Stones at Infinity this point. Infinity Stones. Yeah. So so yeah, like those because those people go the fuck off. That's like raw as fuck. Yeah. Like those go off. Those. Yeah, but but yeah, man. Those those are the people that uh I would love to probably. So we got work. Chris. Oh, one more. Doja. Can Missy? I have one more? Yeah. Okay. Chris Doja. SZA, Missy, Crit, uh, Rihanna, Adele, Ed Sheeran, um, Stevie Wonder. Uh, I'm trying to see if somebody else I just missed, but I think that was pretty much it. Um, and then I'm just gonna make it ten, right? I'm gonna say Kirk Franklin. Okay, Kirk Franklin. Kirk Franklin is such a huge influence. On me as a church kid, and then the last one I say, I would love to work with Shaka Khan. Ooh, I would love to legendary work legendary Shaka Khan with Shaka Khan. I don't know if people understand who Shaka Khan really is. Yeah, I feel like people to gotta be as, re- reminded. As, yeah, in a way, as, as black folk with music, it's like she get her respect, but I don't think y'all really get. She don't like, get her respect, like. <sighs> Come on, y'all. I'm going to say it like this. I personally believe no Shaka Khan, no Whitney Houston. That's okay. How, that's how I feel. That's how I feel. I feel like Shaka is the prototype. She's the prototype okay. of, of that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I never I never thought of it. It's like if you look I in see, that. I see, you see where I'm it. going, yeah. right? If you look in that, like a mom and then he go to offshoots. Yeah. I feel like Whitney Houston is an offshoot. Okay, a shaka of Shaka Khan. You right. So that's all we got for this interview. I want to oh, thank points. Know. I want to thank points. But before he leaves, we're gonna do a rapid fire game round to see what he's gonna come with off the top of his dome. Stay locked in. We'll be right back. So what's up, y'all? I'm your host Ram. I'm back, Yo. and we got my boy points here. What's up, we're what's about up? to do a game called a rapid fire round and what i'm gonna do is ask him a question and he has to go off the top of his dome he can't even think about it so let's get into it let's go so i got a few things here so we got jersey or la jersey facts are you an early bird or a night owl Mm, night owl (laughs) last book you read (laughs) facebook (laughs) okay I got a lot of information, so. Uh, studio or stage? Stage. Stage, for sure. Stage, okay. Yeah. One word to describe your last recording session. Let me think. Freeing. Okay, freeing. That's a good feeling to feel. Yeah. Um, Last artist you listen to, or the artist you listen to the most. I need a bigger. Okay. Classic. Favorite comfort food. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Chinese food. Okay. Dream vacation spot. South Beach, Miami. Okay. I'm, 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 I'm um, a simple nigga. 
<laughs> What's your most used app on your phone? Instagram. <laughs> sure. Um, favorite soundtrack of all time. These this rapid fire questions is crazy. <laughs> what favorite soundtrack? Um, Soul Food. Okay, that's a good soundtrack. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, Babyface is always still Instagram with those. What's the first thing you do when you wake up in the morning? My wife would say, "Grab my phone." Okay. <laughs> Turn up and grab my phone for sure. Um, your go-to karaoke song. I see you on Instagram on the karaoke. Joyful, joyful now, <laughs> but it used to be contagious. But okay. The brothers, oh, from the Isley Brothers. Now it's joyful, joyful. <laughs> Best advice you've ever received. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> I don't know why this came in my head because it's not my best advice I ever seen. But it was the first thing that can't pop in okay. my head, right? Shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Like, but that's not my that's not the best advice. Let me let me really say. It is some, some advice. It is it is shut the fuck up though. Okay. Because it's advice my grandmother gave me, which was I'd rather be quiet and be thought of as a dummy than open my mouth and be proven one. Okay. An era of music where you would time travel to. Oh, the seventies. Man, I would have what I would have had my chest out, <laughs> the gold chains. I know I would have been in there. I would have been in there. Like, what's up, man? I would have been in that motherfucker, man. All what? right, so this is the last one. Disco dancing and shit. A mantra or your favorite quote? A mantra or my favorite quote. Right now, the one is don't worry about a thing. Okay. Because every little thing is going to be all right. All right. Yeah. I feel that. Yeah. So I want to say thank you again. Thank you. Thank um, you for I appreciate me. you for giving me the gems, all your knowledge. Yeah, yeah and this place is amazing. So. Thank you. Shout out to the Music Box yeah. LA for providing us with this location. Shout out to DabTap for sponsoring this whole show. I got points here. He just graced us with a great interview. Before he goes, we're yeah. going to play a song. And this you don't want to miss because it's his latest song, right? Yeah, dropping yeah, it as yeah, a yeah. I'm, I'm dropping this as a single. I'm stepping it into single. another little like zone of my career. And, um, yeah, it's coming from uh, a DJ, a DJ. You may know him. His name is Points, but uh, for this purposes, it's going to be Twenty Two Pumas. So okay, I'm dropping these records, and yeah, I want y'all to vibe out with me. All right, so you want to do a drop? Yeah, hey, Let's introduce the song. This is 22 Pumas, and you about to hear Ultimate Warrior. Peace. <laughs> he gonna listen to that all black that was 22 black. pumas with ultimate warrior like yeah. you said it was a fire track to me like what you think yeah i mean you gonna ask me yeah. i loved it yeah yeah that shit gonna be crazy you know what i'm saying so again thank you for stopping by thank, thank, you. thank you for coming out. i appreciate you that was points yeah, I think Grammy this is the beginning Award of my winning. little podcast tour. I'm about yeah. to do my little podcast tour now. I got things to promote. Right. So you I'm got things to, to promote. There. I'm about things to, get to out say there too. <laughs> Gems to drop. Yeah, so for thank sure. Thank you. I appreciate you a lot you for coming by. Brother. Peace. Oh, sure. This is Points, and you are watching me on Rom's World.